from my experience, the youth from 18 to 25, that's really where you're the most passionate about all of the issues that truly concern you. Today, we investigate why young people are so turned off when it comes to voting. Social media is revolutionizing how politicians interact with the public. I, I think as we go forward, the parties are going to have to learn to utilize social media. Uh, I think the, the media is just sort of trying to get all the different angles and get the information out to the public. And does the media's coverage of politics affect the way you vote? Hello, I'm Tony Bourgeois, and welcome to People, News, and Democracy, a show produced entirely by New Brunswick Community College students. Today we'll be examining how news, people, and politics coexist. Attack ads have been used for years by many political campaigns, and this past federal election has been no different. We went to find out what people think of their politicians using this strategy. Attack ads and negative campaigning are not something new to Canadian politics, but some voters think it's going too far. I personally think it's very un-Canadian. I don't think it should be uh, even allowed to be used. I don't believe that's the proper way to, to conduct politics, but it's today's way and everybody's doing it. Um, it's always negative as far as I'm concerned. Every time you see them out there, they're fighting with one another. And I the recent federal election brought a barrage of attack ads. Instead of dealing directly with political issues, ad after ad seemed to slam the credibility and integrity of opposing party leaders. Most of the people I spoke to didn't like the idea of attack campaigns being used in the federal election. A lot of people seemed actually insulted by the idea. They don't like the ads, but political pundits believe the ads work. Conservative polls began to rise after their attack ad of Michael Ignatiev aired. Jim Dunnett is the marketing instructor at NBCC and explains the role ads take in shaping public opinion. Uh, and it has to appeal to people, so that it has to appeal to whether it's an emotional appeal or uh, the appeal of the product is going to satisfy them in some ways. According to many analysts, attack ads aim for an emotional appeal. Getting undecided voters angry about a certain political party also gets the voter interested and involved. Not all parties used attack ads. The Green Party urged Canadians to change the channel on attack ads, saying it doesn't have to be like this. But as long as politicians believe attack ads work, it's likely they will be used in the next election. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Elections are your only opportunity to decide who will govern your country. But before you mark the ballot, journalists have a responsibility to inform you. Michael McDonald reports. Whenever you pick up a newspaper or turn on a newscast during election time, a journalist has worked to provide you the information you need. According to many, like Joel O'Kane, the media has a responsibility to provide perspective. O'Kane is assignment editor at the Daily Gleaner. The media helps to provide uh, balance and perspective uh, to these stories, so there's a lot of information out there, there's a lot of information on the web and Twitter, and I'd like to think the media provides perspective on that. Rogers Television also emphasizes election coverage. They use a national news stream to keep you up to date on election night. Uh, what we do is uh, we work with a data stream that comes from Ontario and it's basically done on a national level with all the Rogers TV stations uh, taking part of the data stream and that way we can get up to date election numbers and results. Greencorn says good coverage allows you to make informed decisions on election night. Uh, I think the, the media is just sort of trying to get all the different angles and get the information out to the public uh, about how the election process works and how the democratic process works. I think a lot of people uh, tend not to know what's going on. The more you know about the process, the more informed your decision will be. The media has a responsibility to you to be objective in their coverage of elections. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. A journalist is supposed to remain impartial in their work, but if one runs for political office, a controversy can arise if they come back to their job. Kyle Dupont has the story. I had to get assurances that my, that my boss would in fact take me back, uh, and so I will. And I suspect that's where the challenge will be. Randy McKean went to politics knowing he could sit back in the journalist chair. But listeners might question if he can maintain impartiality with former ties to the Liberal Party. You know, if they want to go out and say that, that Randy McKean is abusing his position as a news director or whatever, and here's the proof, then, then fine, then, 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 then we'll deal with that. With years of experience, McKean maintains that he will continue to apply the proper ethics as news director at Capital FM. When I sit down and put together a newscast or if I write a news story, I know the principles of journalism. I know that you're supposed to be balanced, you're supposed to be fair, you're supposed to be objective. Jordy Morgan, who went to radio school with McKean, also has stepped into the world of politics. 
With an open bias, he feels as though it allows the listener to perceive the story the way they choose. It would probably color people's perceptions of what he was saying. McKean believes that if there is an issue in time, it will come out. But so far, no listeners have raised any questions. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Election night is an important night for Canadians and politicians. We went down to the campaign offices to capture the excitement and drama of election night. The polling stations are bustling, with everyone trying to cast their ballot while they still can. Each person with their own reasons why. It's about the only way we, we get to uh, demonstrate our, uh, our uh, ability to govern. It's my first time voting, so my parents told me I probably should. Yeah, well, it's your right and your duty to, and to get the right person to run the country. During election night, most candidates gather at their campaign headquarters to await the results. Oh, well, people are uh, operating on uh, adrenaline by the time you reach, reach uh, this stage of the game. And, uh, it's, it's very exciting. There's lots of an, you know, anticipation. And... Debbie Graham is an avid supporter of the Conservative Party and Mike Allen. Proud to be a Tory and I, I come out to any opportunity that I have to uh, help out a, a fellow Tory candidate. Aline Bourguin is Chuck Chasson's campaign manager. Regardless of the outcome, Bourguin is happy with the campaign she helped yeah, run. Yeah, well, we're, we're proud of, of, of getting our candidate out there to get him visual, uh, you know, with our signs, our radio announcements, and, and, and him actually uh, working tirelessly to, to get around the riding and meet with people constantly, day and night, uh, 12 hours a day. Besides being Chasson's CM, she is also his sister and says the experience was unexpected. I joined the team, not originally not to be in that position, but uh, our campaign manager fell ill, so here I am in that position now. With their supporters and family members by their side, the drama intensified and the board began to fill as the votes were streamed in from television, phones, radio and the internet. Tensions though were a little higher at the Liberal headquarters for Tobik Maktaquak. A technical issue with their TV was not how they wanted to start off the night. As the results were read aloud via radio, whatever optimism was left in the room quickly turned to disappointment for Chuck Chasson and the Liberals. With their fate all too certain, the somber crowd withdrew to the after party. Over at the Conservative office for Tobik Maktaquak, moods were also running high, but with confidence. As the results came in from CBC, Mike Allen's party reveled in their victory. In a word, I'm humbled. Uh, humbled by the, uh, the outcome tonight. Incumbent candidate Mike Allen has won this riding twice, but enjoys it just as much as the first time. This was a really different campaign for me, and I guess one of the best lines that uh, a fellow said to me one day was, well, when he asked me how the campaign was going, I said, well, pretty good, but I said, I'm cautiously optimistic, but we have to get our vote out. And one of the words he said, well, Mike, I find you've done a lot of plowing between elections. Allen won a sounding victory in the Tobik Maktaquak riding this election, receiving nearly 18,000 of the 30,000 votes. Our candidate, Chuck Chiesson. Chuck! Meanwhile, in Grand Falls, the Liberals closed out the night with a speech from their candidate, Chuck Chasson. So I guess it's going to be tough for, tough for me to uh, talk more than Ron. Uh, it seems every time we ask Ron to say a few words. Lock swinging. We, we, uh, we had signs up really early. We had our radio ads done, our, our newspaper spots. So uh, really, uh, I don't see how we could have run a better campaign. Uh, I managed to uh, convince four people, or I just find four people. Despite the discrepancy of the loss, Chasson appeared humbled by the experience. I'm, I'm extremely proud of my campaign. I, you know, we came into this campaign, we were a small group, we had a core group. I uh, had four, four people who came on board to uh, be my core group, my core uh, campaign team. And uh, none of us had any experience. And I think we came together with a really good and a positive campaign. And we came out of the block. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Although the election may not have gone as planned for the Liberals in Tobik-Maktaquak, 
The result hasn't dampened their spirits, and they look forward to the next election. While the results in New Brunswick for the election remained relatively unchanged, the same cannot be said for the rest of the country. A major paradigm shift in the House of Commons saw the Conservatives win a majority, the Liberals and Bloc all but obliterated, and the NDP ride the orange wave to sole opposition. Coming up next, are young people voting the way their elders do? Well, actually, when I first uh, started to vote, I was very influenced. And are Canadians fed up with elections? I think the system has to be changed, actually. Uh, it's too easy to uh, have another election. Welcome back to the show. If you'd like to see more of our stories, please visit jschoolnbcc.ca. The recent election has shown a slight increase in voter turnout, but the numbers are still at historic lows. Young adults seem to be the most apathetic of the age groups. Mike Trusiak looks into why the next generation seems so turned off by voting. The decline in the number of young people voting has become a concern over the past few elections and has many politicians scratching their heads as to why. From my experience, the youth from 18 to 25, that's really where you're the most passionate about all of the issues that truly concern you. It's where you really feel that you want to speak up. It's where you really feel that you can and want to make a difference. The ears are like up to here. Classes like political science try to educate and engage young students into the nature of politics. Um, I guess I'm fairly interested. I, I love talking about politics, like especially when we do it in a class setting and you get different people's like opinions going on and who likes who and why they like this person and why they think this person should win and I just I kind of I find it very interesting. Despite some students' interest towards politics, they still believe politicians themselves are neglecting the youth demographic. If they put more effort into getting to know this like, part of the voting population, then maybe they would understand and they'd have more people. Maybe they'd see more enthusiasm. Yeah, maybe, maybe they, they would, they would see, be, see be more it. into it if they, were, if they were putting more forward. 63% of registered voters aged 18 to 24 never voted during the 2008 federal election. The 2011 election did see a slight increase in national voter turnout, but no official stats of age demographics have been released. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. Barack Obama's step onto the stage of social media is one of the first of its kind, and Canadian politicians are following closely in his tech-savvy footsteps. As Jill Constantine reports, social media played an important role in the past federal election. From Facebook to Twitter, you could see politicians promoting their platforms through social media during this year's election. Liberal candidate Linda Wilhelm did just that. Right from the beginning, we had a Facebook group set up, even before uh, the official sanctioning of it by the Liberal Party, and it worked out really well, and we posted a lot of election uh, ideas. There are 17 million Canadians on Facebook and close to 5 million on Twitter, many of whom are young adults. Wilhelm hopes that social media will make it easier for young people to be informed that they can receive information in two or three minute bites where they can just kind of look at it and then go, that they would actually maybe begin to understand some of the issues. Editor of the Bugle Observer, Jim Dumville, agrees social media is making a difference. I think it made a difference this time and I, I think as we go forward, the parties are going to have to learn to utilize social media. Social media is opening up the way parties reach voters. They now interact with voters and communicate more directly. Staying informed during election time has been made easier through the use of social media. Voters no longer have to wait to hear a leader's message. It is published instantly with the click of a button. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. If you base your vote on family tradition, you're not alone. Many people say they vote the way their family votes. Ashley Dunbar has more. If you voted in the recent federal election, did you vote based on family tradition? If so, you're not alone. My parents influence me by the simple reason that they say, vote, because if you don't vote, you have no right to criticize after. Well, actually, when I first uh, started to vote, I was very influenced. But, uh, of course, as I got uh, on my own uh, in later years, uh, I looked at the uh, individual candidates more so even than the, the uh, parties. Voting along the lines of family tradition is a thing of the past. If I agree with them, great. If I don't, I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm going to vote their party lines just because my parents did, but yeah. 
listen to what they have to say and what their thoughts were. Sean DeLong is producer at Rogers in Fredericton. He remembers covering elections when traditional voting was very common. Very traditional for voters to follow suit the way their parents did, the way their grandparents did. Back in those days, you had two main parties. You had the progressive conservatives and the liberals here in New Brunswick. Tobik Mactaquack voters elected a conservative member of parliament in the past four federal elections. In the same time, Fredericton has voted three different ways, New Democratic, Independent and Conservative. It appears that traditional voting is no more, at least in the capital city. In Woodstock, Ashley Dunbar, Community College News. Coming up next. It's intensely difficult in the rural area that we have. Learn what it's like to run in one of the largest rural ridings. Welcome back. This show is just one of money produced by the journalism students at NBCC Woodstock. Keep your eyes open for the next show on Rogers Television. Going door to door is a familiar way of campaigning, but in rural areas like Woodstock, it's not so easy. Ethan Hazlitt examines the difficulties politicians face when running in rural ridings. Tobit Matchquack is one of the largest ridings in Canada. Potential MPs have to cover just under 16,000 square kilometers. Oh, the, it's, it's intensely difficult in the rural area that we have. We have a lot of communities. We have a number of different municipalities in the community, but we have a population that's pretty spread out. Running for a seat in Parliament in a spread out rural area like Tobik Matchquack means the candidate must be willing to travel long distances. It's, it's long. Uh, there's a lot of mileage to be put in. I put in about 7,000 kilometers in five weeks. However, there are occasionally breaks even for the candidates. I, I guess I did uh, some door-to-door -door in Canterbury the other day where the houses were fairly close together and it was actually kind of fun because I could walk. So I, I enjoyed that and uh, it kind of helped me work off my lunch that I had. For someone running for a seat in Parliament, it's a necessity to get the message to the people. However, sometimes it's not that easy. I know during the campaign I was getting calls from people saying that, you know, we haven't seen you or, or they were calling our campaign office and saying we haven't seen your candidate, where is he? And, and, and I was in their areas, but it's just, you just can't knock on everybody's door. There's just too many. Since the boundaries were redefined in 1997, the Tobik-Mackquack riding has been represented in Parliament and has been conservative since 2006. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. On May 2nd, Elections Canada set up a spending limit of $21 million for each running party. The Tobik Mactaquack Riding Association had a spending limit of over $84,000. Jocelyn Turner looks into where this money goes and what people think. 2011 in Canada. New Brunswick Riding Associations had, on average, spending limits of $80,000. Chuck Chesson, the recent Liberal Party candidate in the Tobik Mactaquack Riding, explains where they spent their allotment. We did up uh, a flyer. Basically, it was an introductory flyer telling people who I was and what I was about. And we sent that out to about 30,000 homes. And just, you know, the postage alone on that was quite a big chunk of our budget. So uh, mostly, uh, most of it went to media and then the balance would have went to uh, you know, signage. While a single election ad in TV media may cost hundreds of dollars, easily taking up large parts of the budget, some people we spoke to think $80,000 is a lot for one riding association. You know, they're, they're trying to get um, their, you know, voice out there and it costs money. That surprises me, 80 some thousand, because I can remember working with budgets around 20000 Majority conservative. Chesson said they did not use all the money they were allowed in the last election campaign. You know, if we would have done a third of that, that would have been about it. And I'm sure, uh, and judging by the by my uh, my two competitors or my two biggest competitors' uh, campaigns, uh, I'm sure they spent less than we did. Even with the parties not using all of their budget money, some people like Antworth and Kirsten thought the money could be better used elsewhere. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Some Canadians groan when they hear they're in for another election. With an average of one every other year over the last decade, are some Canadians less likely to care? Jeff Stairs delves into election burnout. On May 2nd, Canadians cast their votes in the latest general election. It was the fifth time since 2000 that the country has gone to the polls. When coupled with provincial and municipal ballots, opinions are mixed as to whether this democratic process has gotten out of hand. I think the system has to be changed and actually uh, 
it's too easy to uh, have another election. I don't think that's too much to ask for people to go and vote once every three years. It's going to happen again in four more years or two more years or one more year. So especially people my age, they don't really see the point. Voter turnout hit an all-time low during the 2008 federal election. Only 59% of eligible Canadians took part. Political officials are left to wonder whether voter fatigue is playing a part in potential voters staying home. Conrad Anderson is president of the NDP Riding Association for Tobik Mactaquack. He thinks election backlash may even have influenced how some Canadians voted. I'm sure there's been, there was some fatigue and um, a lot of people, I think, uh, voted for Harper because they were tired of frequent elections. With a Conservative majority now in power, voters are unlikely to go back to the polls anytime soon. Time will tell if the increased stability will translate into greater voter turnout at the next federal election. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. That's our show for today. We hope you enjoyed People, News and Democracy. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Tony Bourgeois and welcome to People. Try this again. <laughs> Attack ads have been used for years on many political campaigns, and this federal election has been no different. I've, we went out to speak to the people to find out what voters think of these. The, 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 the. Random bug. Take three. And Mike Allen received close to the same amount of votes as he did in 2008. 18 of the 30,000. In this election. What are you doing? And this will let what? Take four. Going door to door is familiar for campaigns, but in Woodstock, but in <laughs> Haslick, yeah. Okay. Part of me wants to say W. Because. Part of me wants to add the W, and it's not right. Going door to door is a familiar way of campaigning. But in rural communities like Woodstock, it's not so easy. Ethan Hazard examines the difficulties politicians face. Ethan Hazlitt examines. Ethan Hazlitt. Ethan Hazlitt. Ethan Hazlitt. Ethan Hazlitt examines the difficulties politicians face when running in rural ridings. Although the election didn't go as Chuck had wanted to. Although the election didn't go as. I don't know. This may not have gone according to plan for the liberals and Tobin, but it hasn't hampered their. Uh, it hasn't happened, it hampered their spirits. On May 2nd, the Elections Canada set up a budget limit of $21 million for each running party. The Tobik Mactaquack Writing Association had a budget of. And it's going God! We are ready. Take one, ending. Okay. Well, that is it. If you enjoyed the show, People News and Democracy, keep watching the station for other shows produced by New Brunswick Community College students, or log into jschoolmbcc.ca for future showtimes. In other shows, learn how new technology is changing journalism in 2011 and News Odyssey. With the younger generations that are coming up through, they prefer. Um, to get their news from the online. So, I mean, we need to, at this point, we need to find a balance between the two. In citizen journalism, see what it is like to blog about New Brunswick politics. The stories come to me. There's a, uh, I'm in Fredericton. Fredericton is the capital of New Brunswick. Um, I know the routine. These politicians, they have to go, especially when the legislator opens. It's like going deer hunting, but I go, MLA, honey. And in Achieving Success Alumni Showcase, meet some accomplished graduates of MBCC Woodstock. And she was just so uh, interested in improving. I don't know if anybody told you this, but I was diagnosed with cancer two weeks before going to school.